Hello. In this lecture video, we are going to talk or learn about the third software process activity that is software validation. Software validation is more generally called as verification and validation, V and V. It is intended to show that the system confirms both to the specification that was the outcome of the first software process activity and also that it meets the expectation of the system's customer. Program testing where the system is executed using simulated test data. Simulated test data is test data that is created based on the system's design and implementation, not the actual way in which the customer uses the system. So this program testing is one of the primary or principal validation technique. Validation of the software may also involve other checking processes such as inspections and reviews where an expert or a moderator, a person who is other than the developer, can review your code and look for bugs or errors. Because of the predominance of testing, the majority of validation costs are incurred during and after implementation. Except for small programs, major software system should not be tested as a single software unit. Rather, we are going to do testing as and when we develop. Let's take a look at the picture on the slide, which shows the different stages of testing. The first stage component testing or development testing. As I already told you, a software system delivers different sets of functionality. Every functionality, the individual functionality, may be implemented as a component. These components are then integrated together to form the entire software system. So in the development testing or the component testing, the components making up the system are tested by the people or by the programmer developing the component. Each component is tested independently without taking into consideration other system components. Components could be anything like simple in entities such as functions or classes, or they could be coherent groupings of other entities. Let's go on to the next stage of testing the system testing. Now these components are integrated together into either an entire system, the final system, or if the system, the software system to be delivered is a large system, then components, a few components may be integrated to form subsystems and then the subsystems may be integrated to deliver the final system. The system components are integrated, as I told you, to create the complete system. So in system testing, we are concerned with finding errors that result from unanticipated interactions between components or errors that did not surface during component testing. These could be errors with component interface design or maybe when components interact with each other. It is also concerned with showing that the system actually meets its functional and non-functional requirements. That is, we have already defined what are the system's requirements as the first software process activities. In the requirement specification, we have defined what the system should actually produce, the actual output of the system, and also the non-functional requirements like the measures of reliability, dependability, availability, the performance of the system, and so on. System testing is a phase of testing which will also test these functional, non-functional and performance requirements. For large systems, this stage might be testing a subsystem rather than the final system. Once you have integrated the components into subsystems and subsystems into the final system, or you have integrated all the components together to form the final system, the next stage of testing is acceptance testing. This is the final stage in the testing process before the system is accepted for operational use. The system is tested with data supplied by the system customer rather than with the simulated or artificially created test data used so far. 
acceptance testing may reveal errors and omissions in the system requirements definition because the real data was not tested with the system. Acceptance testing may also reveal requirements problems where the system's facilities do not really meet the user's needs or the system performance is unacceptable. If you look at these three stages of testing, these are interleaved. Once you have the component testing, there is an outward arrow pointing to system testing. From the system testing, you have acceptance testing. Once your system has passed the acceptance testing, it is ready for delivery to the customer. If not, you can always come back to component testing and perform this entire phase again, or after the component retesting, you could directly go to the acceptance testing. Let's look at the different types of testing. Normally, component development and testing processes are interleaved as we already saw. Programmers can make up their own test data and incrementally test the code as and when it is developed. This is an economy, economically sensible approach as the programmer knows the component and therefore is the best te person to test and generate test cases. Suppose you're using an incremental approach to development where each increment delivers an added system functionality and each increment is integrated with the previous system. Then with these tests, they are based on the requirements for that particular increment. When a plan-driven software system is used, testing may be driven by a set of test plans. In this case, an independent team of testers may work with pre-formulated or pre-defined test plans which have been developed from the system specification and design. Let's take a look at the diagram on the slide. This diagram illustrates the, dis the different testing phases in a plan-driven software process. We have already seen what a plan-driven software process is. It is where you have a concrete system definition and development plan in place, and you proceed with the different software process activities in accordance to that plan. After completion of each phase, you're going to get back to the plan and verify if the software you have developed or the software phase you have developed is actually in accordance with the plan put in place even before you began development. So let's look at this diagram. Initially, we have the requirement specification where we are going to define the functional, non-functional, the performance requirements after getting in touch or talking iteratively with customers and end users. From this, from the requirement specification, we can write an acceptance test plan because we know what the customer wants, the final system, how it should behave. All this can be defined. The test cases can be written in the acceptance test plan. Once you have the requirement specification, what we have is the system specification. Now, requirements were given by the customer. Based on the custom, customer requirements, you may define a system that is going to be developed. Now, the system has to be specified with its own requirements. That is nothing but the system specification. Both the requirement specification and the system specification will help a tester write an acceptance test plan. Acceptance test plan is going to be used when the system is finally integrated and just ready for deployment. Once your system specification is ready, what you have next is the system design. System design may be the overall architecture of the system, having all the components, the association, so the links, the interactions of the component, the blueprint of the system defined. So you are going to use the system specification and the system design, both of this are going to be used to generate or come up with the system integration test plan. The system integration test plan is going to be used when you're integrating the components together to form the final system or the subsystem. Going further, once the system design is complete, you have the overall architecture and the components of the system in, plain, in place. You're now going to define the detailed design. Detailed design would be the actual implementation and the actual detailed level design of every single component and the interface. 
This takes into consideration the system's blueprint or the architecture and goes to defining the minute details of how the components are in place, how are they going to be implemented, the software environment, how they're going to inter how you're going to define and implement the interfaces, how the components are going to inter interact with the other components and form the entire system. Now, a tester can use the system design and the detailed design to write up a subsystem integration test plan. Moving on, once you have the detailed design in place, you're finally going to start coding. Here, you're going to take one module, one component, or one unit and write a code for it. And as and when you write the code for one particular unit, unit could be the smallest piece of functionality delivered by your software system, you're going to immediately test it. So this is the kind of uh, the practice which we follow, that is code and test. You're not going to leave the testing at the end when the software system is ready for deployment. Rather, when you're going to code each part or each module of the system, you're going to test it. Once that is done, you're going to integrate some of these modules, put interfaces in between, and create a subsystem. Then you're going to use the subsystem integration test plan, which was made, built using system design and detail design, to actually execute the integration test plan. If your system is large, you're going to put many subsystems together to create the final system, and then you're going to use the system integration test plan to test the system as a whole. Just before deployment, you're going to use the acceptance test plan, which was derived from the requirement specification and the system specification to see if your system is actually acceptable in terms of functional, non-functional, and performance requirements before it is just put to service or deployed at the customer's end. So in this lecture video, we have seen what is validation, what are the different types of testing, what are the different stages in testing, and the V model for a plan driven software process. Thank you.